some takeaways I could uh, say is that we uh, got to focus more on finish the game, um, containing and sustaining the lead, um, and just finishing the game. And welcome, everybody. We are live at West Campus Arena on the campus of Albany State University for SIAC basketball. Tigerettes of Tuskegee getting set to meet the Lady Rams of Albany State. Glad you could join us for the coverage. Charles Ward alongside Dwayne Walker with the play call. And Walk, both teams coming into this ball game this afternoon looking for their first conference win. No question about it. Albany State 0-6. Tuskegee Lady Tigerettes 2-2, two two, but both coming off losses. And as Coach mentioned there, kind of struggling in the, in, in the first quarter, uh, but both teams really just trying to get that first victory tonight in the conference. Tiger Reds trailed, led in that ball game as many as six points in the second half of the contest, but 20 turnovers the real Achilles for them. No question about it. They simply can't turn the basketball over. They'll definitely have to improve on that statistic tonight. We talk about the Lady Rams of Albany State. They're 0-6 on the campaign, and they are looking for that first win. They've got to minimize turnovers as well. Well, listen, not only turnovers, but just as Tuskegee struggled in the first quarter of the score, the Albany uh, Rams, they've struggled to score in the second quarter. Five out of their first six games, they've actually led after one quarter of play, but they've completely tanked in the second quarter, scoring a total of 65 points in all six games this season. And we actually had a chance to catch up with Coach Skinner to get his thoughts about this exact thing you're talking about now. Had uh, exceptional offensive scoring um, in the first quarter. Unfortunately, the second quarter has pretty much been our de demise and our killer heel. We haven't been able to uh, sustain what we start with throughout the first half. Thoughts ahead, Coach Robert Skinner, as his team gets set to meet the Tigerettes of Tuskegee. SIAC basketball is just ahead. Stay with us. Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easy to get what you need and have fun out there. Get free shipping at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your Academy store. Since 1837, historically black colleges and universities have been fulfilling their purpose to educate and empower. Since 2009, the Home Depot's Retool Your School Campus Improvement Grant Program has also been powered by a purpose to update, upgrade, and uplift HBCU campuses. Today, 44 million votes, $4.1 million, and 147 grants later, we remain inspired by the people, the passion, and the power of HBCUs to continue our purpose. Learn more at retoolyourschools.com. And we're back live in the West Campus Arena on the campus of Albany State University getting set for SIC action. The Lady Rams of Albany State getting set to host the Tigerettes of Tuskegee University. Glad you could join us for the coverage. Charles Ward, Dwayne Walker with the play call. The walk as a line up to being introduced here inside the arena. Let's take a look at what Coach Skinner's going to go with in terms of his starting five. It'll be Joanna Bell, the junior from Miami, at start. She's averaging 2.6 assists per ball game for the Lady Rams. Kira Peterson, the sophomore, got to keep a strong eye on her. 8.2 points per rebounds per counting for her. And she's going to be a force for the Lady Rams in this basketball game this afternoon. Taylor Thrash, the junior, getting the start instead of Chelsea Hill in today's ball game. Only the third ball game for Thrash in the lineup to starting tonight. Elisa Saffold, the junior from Birmingham, leads the team in scoring with 14.7 points per ball game. And rounding out the five for the Lady Rams, Yasmin Fairchild, the junior from Lawrenceville, Georgia. For the Tigerettes of Tuskegee, Ariel McElroy will start. So will Samaya Abdul-Rahim at the point guard. Michaela Malik will also start. Brittany Bolin and Jasmine Manuel, the five for Coach Shiante Wester and the Tigerettes of Tuskegee. As we get set to tip things off, both teams looking for their first conference win of the season. Tuskegee at 2-2 two two on the season. Albany State at 0-6. 
Tuskegee on the road. They'll be going left to right on your listening or as you're watching this basketball game. And you're watching it as a special joint venture between Albany State and Tuskegee to have this ball game streamed live. And we're just about ready to start. Malik will jump for Tuskegee. And the tap's going to be controlled by Tuskegee. Brittany Boland, they're going to be looking to get her off early after only three points in their last ball game. They work it down at the block to Manuel. She's doubled. Now Malik fires a jumper out front. Half court set, gives it over to Albany. And Charles, Albany State came out in a matchup zone to begin this contest. Now, Albany State, they've been getting out of the gate, Charles. Five of their first six games, they've led in the first quarter. Let's see how they get off tonight. Bell out front. Now over to Peterson, the sophomore. Peterson, 12.2 points per ball game average for her. They work it over to Saffold behind the arc. Now down at the base left side, good defensive job work by Abdur Rahim for Tuskegee to step in and swipe that basketball that goes out of bounds, though it will stay with Albany State. Abdur Rahim coming down from her guard position near the free throw line to get a paw in on that basketball. 11 seconds to shoot now for the Lady Rams. They inbound it in the corner. Tapped out of bounds again this time by Ariel McElroy for Tuskegee. So Thrash, the junior, didn't play in the last ball game against Spring Hill. That one went into overtime. Lady Rams coming up short in that one. Six to shoot now. Floater to the glass and banked good by Lisa Seifold. Saffold Charles leading this program in scoring 14.7 points per contest. She can yep. put it in the basket. Got her first two there. Lady Rams with a 2 0 lead. Abdur Rahim over to Bolin. Foul on extended down at the block to Abdur Rahim. And they answer with a basket down low. Good pass out front from Brittany Bolin. Unselfish by Bolin to spot her teammate. Tied at two. Half court set now for the Lady Rams. Inside the paint, basketball almost taken away from Fairchild. They get a shot out front. That one spins and off the cylinder. And we go back the other way now. Tiger Reds with it. Eight thirty-two left, first period of play. Tuskegee off a 60-55 loss to the Lady Wildcats of Fort Valley. Half court set McElroy behind the arc. Saffold with that defensive assignment. They drop it inside to Manuel. Now Malik's tied up. Good defensive work there by the Lady Rams. Seven to shoot. Bolin, jumper out front, on the range. Oh, that was pure, Charles. Three-point basket for Bolin. Bolin, 12.3 points per ball game. The first points in this contest. Saffold back the other way to the glass, missed on the shot. Manuel rebounds for Tuskegee. Abdul Rahim trying to push it left side. She saw the official over there in black. Threw it that way and threw it out of bounds. It looked like it was going to hit Praise Russell, one of our officials tonight. Speaking with Charles, the officiating crew, the referee is Melanie Rozier. Praise Russell and Whitney Niles are the other officials. Yeah, I heard her getting into the basketball game, but they almost did there with a the pass from Abdul Rahim. Inside the paint, this is Thrash. Back out to Saffold now. 4-2 lead for Tuskegee as Joanna Bell handles out front and whistle down low. Three Charles, se three second violation called on Yasmin Fairchild, spending a little too much time in the lane. And why not, Charles? She leads this club with 18 offensive rebounds so far this season. Yeah, she likes that space inside the paint. Turnover for the Lady Rams. They average 19 turnovers per ball game. Bowling off of the screen, and they get her for the travel violation. And Charles, turnovers is one of our points of emphasis tonight. Tuskegee has to chop down on their turnover efficiency. So far this year, Charles averaging 15 turnovers per game. Yeah, they had 20 in that loss to Fort Valley. 
And a ball game that they led by six late. Saffold left corner, missed on the jumper, but the backside rebound to Thrash, and they'll get another look. They push it back out front. This is Peterson with a jumper and found the range for the Lady Rams. Tira Peterson with a nice stroke there, Charles. Charles, she's shooting 37% from three-point land. 27%, excuse me, this season. Her eighth three-pointer of the season on that connection. Down low, Tuskegee can't convert a run out for the Lady Rams. Saffold had it tapped by Boland running back defensively. Boland did a nice job of sprinting the floor, not giving up on the play, and causing that turnover. So Tuskegee back the other way with the basketball. Lady Rams with a 5-4 lead. And Boland will take a chance running the offense out front for Coach Wester. Left side, Malik. Malik with three of four from three-point range in the last ball game for Tuskegee. Got a rebound there and put back inside for the Tigerettes. Michaela Malik did a nice job of blocking off her girl and grabbing that offensive rebound and scoring. So with that basket, take Tuskegee takes a 6-5 lead. Bell works it in the corner left side, in the paint, back out Saffold left side now. Bell squares, jumper out front, spinners off the mark. Malik collects that rebound for Tuskegee. Averaging 4.8 rebounds for the Tigerettes coming into today's action. We're down to 540 left, first period of play. McElroy fires the jumper. They left her alone for just a brief fraction of a second. That's enough for her to get it off. McElroy leading his team points per ball game at 12.8 as Abdul Rahim runs down an errant pass by the Lady Rams. Up the floor, Bolden, right side, Brittany quickly to the rack and got the lay-in. Good she's transition got, basket there, Walker. No question, Charles. She's got four early points. She's averaging 12.3 points and four rebounds this season. Thrash back up top. Bell fires a jumper. Spinner's going in and popping out for her, but a rebound Saffold, her floater is short. They fight for the basket, down low, and they're put back on the inside by Peterson. Fight indeed. Peterson showing no, uh, uh, no quit in grabbing that offensive rebound. Snatched away from her own player in Saffold to score her fifth point of the game. Peterson at 8.2 rebounds per outing. They pull that one down for a basket. McElroy can't find her, the range on that one out front. And here come the Lady Rams, trailing 10-7. Charles, on offense, I'd like to see Tuskegee try to get the ball inside to Jazz Emanuel, who's really working getting up and down the floor. Emanuel, six points, five rebounds in the last ball game against the Lady Wildcats. Nice defensive effort there. Walling up. Boland pushes left side to the rack and got it with the left hand lay in. Brittany Bolin made the decision early that she was going to cross over and take that basketball all the way to the lane, through the lane with her left hand with the leg. Six points for her now. Averaging 12.3 points per ball game. Saffold can't get it to stay down for. And no for Bolin. She really wanted to get off quickly in this ball game after a disappointing performance against the Lady Wildcats. Has done so thus far. Manual with it, but she's way out front. Now Bolin fires a jumper. That one's off the mark. And Fairchild clears for the Lady Rams. Left corner jumper. That one by Thrash is off the mark. They fight for it. It goes out of bounds. It'll stay with Albany State. So 3-17 remains here in the first period of play. Tigerettes of Tuskegee with a 12-7 lead over the Lady Rams of Albany State. Continuing coverage of SIC basketball after this timeout. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easy to get what you need and have fun out there. 
Get free shipping at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your Academy store. Does the, the combined campuses for Albany State a few years ago with the consumption of Dalton, uh, Darden College into Albany State overall. So two campuses for Albany State were on the West Campus today. 317 remains, first period of play. Tuskegee with a 12-7 lead over the Lady Rams. Charles, I think they have a foul called there. That might be our first foul of the contest, Charles. I believe you're right. Yeah. And, and that will win against number one, Arielle McElroy, her first personal foul, first team foul. That'll send Peterson to the line for the Lady Rams to shoot. Kara from the line, 59%, 10 of 17 for Albany State. First free throws of the contest. Series between these teams from back to 2013 to 2022, Tuskegee with a 10-8 lead. The last meeting at the beginning of last year, Tuskegee won that one going away in Tuskegee, 85-40. Second shot was off the mark, but the Lady Rams run it down in the corner. Saffold out front. I was going to say, Charles, that's a stat they have improved on that. Ooh, wow, that free throw shooting. Um, JoJo Monroe, the junior. How about it for JoJo? JoJo coming right in, not shy at all. Yeah. Charles, she just doubled her points production per game. She's coming in averaging 1.8. <laughs> doubled her pleasure. Bolin triples her pleasure from out front with a three-pointer for the Tigerettes, make it 15 to 11. Bolin really heating up with nine early points, Charles, with two minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Yeah, that Lady Wildcat defense of Fort Valley was just on her, just doubling her at times. It was just difficult for her to get her shot off. As Saffold gets her shot off here, she'll be going to the line after she's fouled. Samaya so Abdur Rahim clipped her on their arm, and we're going to have, I believe, a trifecta of free throws coming up, Charles. I believe it's going to be one, two, three for Saffold. Yeah, it will be. She'll be at the line shooting. She's a very, very good free throw shooter, Child, shooting 86% on the year. Only one miss, six of seven from the charity stripe. As a team, the Lady Rams shoot 64% from the free throw line as Saffold makes the first. Yeah, Charles, both of these clubs actually shooting 64% from the line. That's a number that definitely needs to be uh, on the climb, if you will. Yeah, you want to see that thing about 75% or better if possible, but certainly in the 70s plus, for sure. Abdur Rahim takes a seat for Coach Wester and Tuskegee. Talking to Coach Wester in the pregame, heard her comments with regard to what she felt her Tigerettes took away from that Fort Valley ball game. It was still there. And JoJo Monroe to the rack underneath. She'll run it down, missed on her shot. It was touched by the Tigerettes, and she came back into play to get it. Charles, she is quick. <laughs> and she is on target with a three-pointer. She's got a half dozen already, Charles, on two three-pointers. Freeport Bahamas native playing very freely here in this first period of play. McElroy on the move left side. First two three-point passes of the year, I might add, too. First three-pointers of the year for the young lady. Gives the Lady Rams a 16-15 lead as we're under two minutes left first period. Bolin asking for a screen by Austin. Tries to work it left side. McElroy, hard step floater in the corner. Got it. Oh, that was silky smooth, Charles. Working that left side. Stroking it for two. She's got four overall. At 14 in the loss to the Lady Rams. Three or four from out there behind the arc for McElroy. Lady Rams, half court set, whistle travel there inside. The senior, Chelsea Hill, too many steps, gives it back over to Tuskegee. Looked like the baseline was, official was going to call a foul. Yep. While meanwhile at the top with the now said it was a travel. There Nonetheless, it's a turnover against the Albany State Rams. 
A minute 18 remains first period. Quick moving first period here in the West Campus Arena. Trinity Layton out on the floor now for the Tigerettes. Aaliyah Austin dumps it down at the block to Layton. She's there, nicely done on the play inside between Austin and Layton. That's the one-two punch right there, Charles. Tuskegee leading at 19-16 now. Under a minute left. Lady Rams there into the floor. Whistle down low. Kyla Raven, the freshman from right here in Albany, down at the block, had the positioning on the inside, and Austin commits that foul. Entry pass, Saffold's got some space. Good look oh. this time, no rimmer. This is just the bottom of the net with the triple. 45 seconds left, first period. We're tied at 19. Leighton across the timeline. McElroy, far side of the floor. 17 on the shot clock. Leighton out front. Hard move by her inside the paint. Head fake, ball to the cylinder, got it done. Excellent job by Leighton there to gather herself in the lane and not shoot that shot off balance. Excellent job by her scoring her fourth point of the game. We talked about it throughout the season. Coach Wester is really high on her. Says she is the strongest player on the floor for Tuskegee. Half court set. Chelsea Hill, runner in the corner, missed on the shot. And that will bring us to the end of the first period here from the West Campus Arena at Albany State. At the end of one, it's a 21-19 lead for the Tigerettes of Tuskegee. You're watching SIC basketball. All our coverage continues after this timeout. Go getters. Together, we bring out the best in each other. With our partner, SIAC, we're creating pathways for the next generation of talent. We're scouting bankers, advisors, techies, and yes, athletes. Kick off your career with UBS. Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easy to get what you need and have fun out there. Get free shipping at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your Academy store. Headed into the second period of play, 21-19 lead for the Tigerettes of Tuskegee over the Lady Rams of Albany State. Both teams looking for their first conference win of the season. Glad you could join us for our coverage. Special coverage provided by Albany State and Tuskegee combined to have this ball game shown live video as Tuskegee is on the road and normally our coverage on the road would just be audio. But through a joint cooperative effort between the athletics department, able to show you this contest live. JoJo Monroe, who has really sparked the Lady Rams out on the floor. Bounce pass right base to Melania, Melena Holmes, who just got on the floor. Melana Holmes, a senior from Mableton, Georgia. Layton gives it to Malik in the corner. Got some space. Drop back jumper there by Michaela Malik is good. So Tuskegee with that basket takes a 23-19 lead. Coming into the facility earlier today, and Coach Wester and Tuskegee got here. Basket down at the right block, nicely done by Holmes. She just got on the floor and got that lay in right side. Coach Wester and Coach Skinner saw her, and they just started talking a little bit, just meet, meeting each other and talking just a bit as a take back on the inside as Austin got a lay in for the Tigerettes. And Coach Skinner, like he always does, so hospitable, said, if you're asking anything I can do for you, just let me know. Coach right. Wester said, yeah, there is something you can do for us. Can you give us a win tonight? Right. And Coach Skinner was like, anything other than that. <laughs> back the other way, back-to-back -back baskets by Holmes at the block for the Lady Rams. Tuskegee by a bucket. Good work by Holmes coming off the bench. Out front, McElroy. Hard clank at the front of the iron on that three-point effort. Basketball over to the Lady Rams, chance to tie it. Charles Holmes only averaging 14 minutes per game, getting extended playing time because of a couple of sicknesses on the Albany State Golden Rams roster. Both Chelsea Hill is suffering, although she is playing tonight, and Monique Christian um, is out because of illness. 
Kyla Raven, meanwhile, at the block with a nice drop step with their walker to got the defense in the air. She's fouled. She'll be shooting here for the Lady Rams. Leah Austin committed that foul. Looks like she will check. No. Yes, yeah, she will check out of the ball game. So Checking we'll in will be, I'm sorry, Charles. Go right ahead. No, after you. <laughs> I insist. I was just going to add that Leighton went off the floor as well. So. Okay. Well, now, more important things. What were you going to say? Oh, well, Charles, it's not about me. It's about you. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Raven missed the first. Right, so far in this first half of play, 60% from the floor for Tuskegee, 42% for the Lady Rams of Albany State. Diara Diagne in the game for Tuskegee, Charles. McElroy's got some space and drops another two-pointer there for the Tigerettes. Seven in the game, Charles. She's heating up, averaging 12.8 points, five and a half rebounds a game. Out front, long range jumper, air ball there by Raven. Bolin pulls it down under the block, headed back the other way for Tuskegee. Abdul Rahim back out on the floor, she handles. McElroy trying to get it down to Malik at the block. Unfortunately, Charles, that was, uh, that was so Raven. She is 0 for 4 now, oh boy. three point distance. <laughs> I like that. Abdul Rahim with a spinner in the left corner. <laughs> and she got that one to go for Tuskegee. Matching her jersey number, four points tonight. Well, Tuskegee with a better start as Monroe is at the block and drew a whistle. So JoJo will go-go to the free throw line. 7-12 left first half. Cute, I caught that, Charles. Oh boy, I thought it was gonna get past you there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Elena Roberts getting her first spot at duty for Coach Wester and Tuskegee. And Kira Peterson makes it back for Coach Skinner and the Lady Rams. Charles, correct me if I'm wrong. Is this Diara Diagne's first bit of action for the Tigerettes this season? Indeed it is. And she's a freshman from Herndon, Virginia. But I'm going to have a little fun with you right now. <laughs> Pronounce that name again. Uh, wow. <laughs> Diara Diagne. Okay, I'm gonna see if we can't get Eric to put it up on the screen just to show it, and then I'll tell you what Coach Wester told me. Half course oh, so set I'm, here. So, so I'm way <laughs> off, is that what you're trying to tell me? You will never believe it. <laughs> well, then I stand corrected. No, no, that's a great guess, because when I saw it, it was something similar to what you said. <laughs> Action on the floor, kind of hot and heavy right now. Bolin comes away with a rebound for the Tigerettes of Tuskegee. They lead it 30 to 24, 640 remains. You'll have your jaw drop saying, no way. <laughs> Roberts beyond the free throw line, missed on that shot. Lady Rams work it, half court set, trailing by six. McElroy tapped it, almost came away with a steal. Munro has it instead though. Over to Saffold. Jumper right side, good look, just wouldn't stay in for. Out of bounds and back over the other way to Tuskegee. All right, all right, all right, all right. What is it, Charles? <laughs> pronounce it for me before she checks out. Well, of the I'll tell end. you what. You spell it and then I'll pronounce it. How about that? What you Charles, you want me to spell it? Yeah. I mean, you, you <laughs> all right, let's see. D I A R A. That's the first D -I -A -G -N -E. name. D I A G N E. Okay. You. I know it's not what, I, what you're going to say. You better not say that. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't even think you're going to even visualize what I'm about to say. That's well, Jara J. She just shot the ball right there. What is it? Jara J. Jara J. Yes. <laughs> Her first field goal attempt. That one's off the mark, but back the other way. Peterson knocks it down for the Lady Rams. Second three-pointer of the game for her, Charles. She leads all scores with nine points tonight. 5.30 left first half, 30-27 lead for Tuskegee. At the block, Malik to the glass. Spinner falls off the mark. Rebound cleared down low by Peterson. Back out of whistles this time. Travel violation by Peterson 
behind the arc. She did the LeBron James right there. <laughs> yeah. You ever see video of LeBron James like throw, he'll inbound the balls and he'll like walk the ball like take literally three sure, steps sure, two or three before he <laughs> nobody's looking or nobody's gonna call it <laughs> one or the other. <laughs> Leak on the move and got a foul out front. And Charles, this game has had very few foul calls, and that's a good thing. That's a good thing. That means both teams have been playing disciplined defense, which is what you want. Indeed. Yeah, you don't want that to be the interrupter in terms of game flow. Far side of, floor, of the floor, it'll be Malik to inbound it for Tuskegee. They lead by three. Five minutes remaining in this first half of play. Basket on the inside. Who scored that, Charles? <laughs> Jara J got her first field goal of this ball okay. game. Of her career. Yep. And back the other way with a basket on the inside. 32-29 with 437 remaining. Whistles and a travel violation there by Alana Roberts for the time Tigers, the Tigerettes of Tuskegee. 433 remains, 32-29. Tuskegee with the lead over the Lady Rams. will step out for a timeout. This is SIAC basketball. Stay with us. Got more coming. As a global bank, our game plan is to help clients manage their money. We're a team of challengers, thinkers, and go-getters. Together, we bring out the best in each other. With our partner, SIAC, we're creating pathways for the next generation of talent. We're scouting bankers, advisors, techies, and yes, athletes. Kick off your career with UBS. Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easy to get what you need and have fun out there. Get free shipping at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your academy. We're back live in the West Campus Arena at Albany State University. Tuskegee with a 32-29 lead over the Lady Rams of Albany State. We're at 430 remaining. Half court set down at the block. Nicely done by the Lady Rams. They got it down at the block to Fairchild. She's just not able to finish on that one. 32-29 score here, Walker. Fancy footwork by Fairchild. Just couldn't get that basketball to roll in the two basket. McElroy, right side, behind the back. Now dumps it down at the block. Nicely done. Jasmine Manuel can't finish, though. McElroy led it perfectly, Charles. Walker. Monroe down at the block, missed on the shot. Manual clears. McElroy with the quick step. Charles, don't believe the 30-second play clock was running, or shot clock, excuse me, was running on that exchange. So they're going to guesstimate where it is. Probably put it at like 23 seconds, I would presume. Looks like they're going to rest it at 27, Walk. It's close. It's within the margin of error, you know. Ah. McElroy <laughs> missed on the shot. Manuel with a left hand put back for the lay-in. Jasmine Manuel, Charles, doing what she does. First time on the board for this young lady, who, by the way, is shooting 60% from the floor. A little better than that now. Half court set. Out front, this is Peterson. Rattled the look, missed on it, but the backside rebound into the hands of Tra Thrash, but it's out of bounds, we'll say... Looks like they're going to say it'll stay with the Lady Rams. Tigerettes have to do a better job of boxing out once the shot attempt goes up. 3 Mike 19 left first half. Peterson fires a three-pointer. Missed on the shot. Manuel got it over to Abdul Rahim. She fell to the surface. McElroy left side behind the arc. Let's see if they work the ball inside to Jasmine. Charles, Jasmine Manuel. Got some good results last time down the floor. Foul on it, extended instead. It's Abdur Rahim knocking it down for the Tigerettes. 
Charles, she's got a half dozen points tonight. Yep. Six of the 36. And she certainly is disappointed in her performance in that last ball game against Fort, Fort Valley. She was just not able to get her rhythm in that contest either. Better start for all of the starters for the Tigerettes this afternoon. Monroe out front. Thrash with the basketball now. Three to shoot. Threw it right over to Trinity Layton. Three on two basketball. Trinity right side to the rack. It held there for a moment. They'll send her to the line to shoot. That basketball trying to decide whether it's going to go in or stay out. Charles, one thing you don't ever want to be accused of, that I call it the one-two punch. Where you turn the ball over, that's punch number one. And the number two on the other end in transition, you cause a foul. That's going to get you out of the ball game. And right on cue, Taylor Thrash is subbed for. And, you know, we just see it so often when you're covering these games that exactly what you're talking about will happen. A player just perhaps out of just frustration for what they've done, done offensively just carries over and they create a turnover with a foul on the defensive end of the court just trying to make up for what they've done or the, the turnover they committed early on. Just so uncanny how often that happens. And certainly is a preaching and teaching point for coaches as Layton, the freshman, knocks down the free throws, came in two of three from the free throw line. Well, she's making a good campaign for more minutes with the Tigerettes, the performance here in this first half. One-on-one, -on -one. Layton took it away inside from Fairchild. Just risky wanted that basketball inside. more. Yeah, risky pass inside by Chelsea Hill. Didn't get enough under it. Nothing risky about the pass there from McElroy. Just a, a dart thrown inside to Layton. Layton in for an easy layup. Charles Layton averaging just a point and a half coming into this game. She has seven points already tonight. At the glass, that shot's off the mark. McElroy runs it down for the Tigerettes. Ten-point lead now for Tuskegee, their largest of the game. Layton left it on the front of the iron. The junior bell clears for the Lady Rams. Saffold tied up. Bolin tied her up. Down in the corner now, they got a player free. That's Hill with a jumper, and she knocked it down. Hill gets on the board for the first time tonight. She's suffering tonight, Charles, a little bit under the weather. First two for her. Make it 39-31 after the basket by Hill. Tigerettes with it with the lead. Malik in the corner, McElroy for three, back of the iron. Basketball chased down by Bell. And she runs it up the floor left side. Abdur Rahim guarding. 40 seconds left first half. Popping out for the basketball now is Holmes. Now they got it down inside the Fairchild and a whistle travel violation on Esmeralda. Uh, correction, Yasmin Fairchild. Will Charles, 30 seconds remaining in the half. A fresh 30 on the shot clock. Let's see if the Tigerettes will play for one. Indeed, they would certainly like it to be a double-digit lead going into the break instead of single. Right now, Alana Roberts out on the floor. is looking to see if Jasmine Manuel was out there, maybe deciding to go to the inside for her, but she is not on the floor right now. Abdur Rahim into the front court. Surveys the clock as she back pedals near the mid stripe. And Charles, you figure they'd start to get the ball to Bolin in a one on one situation or even Ariel McElroy. So look for one of those two to take the last shot of the half for the Lady Tigerettes. 17 seconds remains in this first half of play. Tuskegee trying to close it with a basket to go up double digits. Entry pass to Abdur Rahim. Right side, Malik with it now. 10 on the shot clock. Are the whistle down low in the right hand corner. And a foul called. Michaela Malik came over Charles and tried to set a screen but was not stable when setting it. In result, offensive foul. 
So going back the other way, Lady Rams with a chance to close the half with a basket. Charles, that's why it's so important to execute in those situations with little time left on the clock. Bell over to Peterson. They got it airborne, but they missed on the shot. So we come to the end of the first half from the West Campus Arena. 39-31, Tigerettes of Tuskegee leading the Lady Rams of Albany State in SIAC basketball. We'll take a time out here. More action coming your way after the break. Since 1837, historically black colleges and universities have been fulfilling their purpose to educate and empower. Since 2009, the Home Depot's Retool Your School Campus Improvement Grant Program has also been powered by a purpose to update, upgrade, and uplift HBCU campuses. Today, 44 million votes, $4.1 million, and 147 grants later, we remain inspired by the people, the passion, and the power of HBCUs to continue our purpose. Learn more at retoolyourschools.com. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. you love to play academy sports and outdoors makes it easier than ever to get what you need and have fun out there get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your academy store and we are back live on the west campus arena of albany state university at the intermission it's the tigerettes of tuskegee with a 39 31 lead over the lady rams of albany state university and as we utter the words Albany State University, we're pleased to be joined now by the athletics director at Albany State, Dr. Christine Kelly. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. No, thank you for having us here. <laughs> we appreciate all the hard work. First half of basketball, kind of the second sport for you coming into your tenure here at Albany State. Started in July, whirlwind of a football season. Let's talk about football for just a moment in terms of just an impressive performance by the Golden Rams. First year head coach, Quinn Gray. So everything just really flowing in that first year. Your thoughts about football? Oh, man, it was such an exciting <laughs> season. Obviously, we started off with, you know, two top 10 teams. Honestly, when you think about a Wingate who went into the postseason last year, you talk about a Valdosta State who just historically is a strong program. So, you know, really start with those two games. And, yes, even though we lost, it was a good measuring stick for us. And then, you know, we rattled off four straight wins. And then, you know, it sounds like we kind of started feeling ourselves a little bit. <laughs> and we needed to kind of bring it together. But, honestly, that's where leadership comes in. And that's where Quinn Gray stepped up and really um, helped propel that team forward with those two big wins against sure. Miles and then Fort Valley that gets us into the championship game. And while we weren't successful in the championship game, there's so many people who would love to be in the championship game in their no first question. year. And here is where Coach Gray is. And it was just an exciting time for me being around, you know, all those young folks. I tell people I worked at Johnson C. Smith when I was in SID. And we lost 24 games in a row. So listen, oh boy. <laughs> I was, I'm end. excited <laughs> to be a part of a winning program. Okay, that's my alma mater. Don't get me wrong. No. I love my alma mater to death. But it was a really exciting year, and I cannot wait to see what we do in years, uh, years to come. Well, you, you referenced the fact that it's part of a winning program, and that's what Albany State really is all about. And I know you were aware of that when you took this position here at Albany State. What was your mindset coming in knowing that you were going to be taking over a program that has that kind of legacy? 
one, and it's, I'm so glad to use the term legacy because if you follow me on social media or anything, and I'm always hashtagging creating legacies because that's what we do. When you talk about what our students do on a daily basis, what our coaches are doing, whose shoulders they're standing on and whose shoulders uh, they will end up, somebody will stand on their shoulders as well. That's what we do here is creating legacies. So knowing that I was walking into a historically successful athletics program, there's a little bit of pressure there sure. in wanting to do well, just a little bit. Um, it starts with football, right? You know, I'm, I'm competitive in everything we do. Whether it's me, you know, walking or, or running every day, I want to beat my per mile time. I'm super competitive, but and I bring that energy to work with me every single day. And I challenge our coaches to create the best experience for our student athletes. And my job is to ensure that we do just that as well as creating a wonderful workplace for our coaches and staff. So, again, do I think the pressure was there? Yes, it is. Okay. Is it still ever going to be there? Yes, it is. <laughs> Continual, but huh? I know that, you know, we have the right coaches in place and the right staff in place to help these young people really graduate and move on and do some, some great things, but really have a wonderful experience while they're here. Well, you talk about the challenge of a legacy program, and you mentioned part of that is having the quality coaches in place yes. to ensure that that winning continues. But as an athletics director, there are a lot of other things that consume your time. Let's Ooh. talk a little bit about that in terms of just what your focus is as the AD. How much time do we have? <laughs> 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 no, I'm kidding. But, you know, honestly, for me, one, coming into this program, it's about peeling back the onion. Because honestly, regardless if you're new or not, every institution has a culture and has a personality. And the one thing that I always say is, what are we going to start doing? What are we going to stop doing? What are we going to continue doing? You can't just walk in and just say, hey, I'm the new AD, I'm changing everything. Because there's certain things that go that's going well here. There are some others that maybe we need to start doing, and there's others that we need to continue doing. So with that, I'm using this first year really as an observation type of year. And so my priorities right now is ensuring our student athletes are taken care of, that they feel supported, that they feel valued, that they recognize we do look at them as strong ambassadors, not only for the institution, but, you know, the city of Albany and, and you know, HBCUs uh, worldwide. So with that being said, one of the things that we started when I first got here, we didn't have a fueling station. And people say, well, what's a fueling station? Well, when you think about smaller schools, you can't control what they eat in the cafeteria. And we know we have what's called FCW, Fried Chicken Wednesday. <laughs> right. I, I well, think HBC all of us partake right? in, in sure. Fried Chicken Wednesday. <laughs> but you can't control what they eat in the cafeteria. So one of the things that we uh, implemented on both East and West Campus is a fueling station where once a day from Monday through, th Monday through Friday from 1 to 4 p.m., our athletes can go in there and pick two items, whether it's to refuel their body, so like a Powerade, a um, Uncrustable, some Cheez-Its, whatever it mm -hmm. is, some, some mozzarella sticks, whatever they need to be able to properly uh, um, perform at a high level. So that was one of the things when you talk about a focus that I was like, we need to do that because that happens at the Power Five schools. Why can't it happen here at Albany State? Mm -hmm. So now they're getting the same experience that somebody down the road in Athens, Georgia may be getting. And it, you know, it, to me, it's, I think the young people have really enjoyed that, um, that option for them. Uh, you know, I've been at this business for quite a while and have not actually heard that articulated the way that you did. How did you stumble, not stumble or identify that that's something that could be done that would truly help the athletes? Because it certainly will. Well, one is, you know, my experiences. So coming from a Vanderbilt, coming from a Dartmouth, um, you know, that, those with over the last few years, you know, fueling stations have really taken off. And my last job, I oversaw our sports performance unit. I was one of my myriad of areas. And that was one thing. So I, again, you take notes and you say, okay, how can I implement that wherever I go? So, you, you, you know, you, I keep a little notebook and I yeah. kept all the little notes in there. And again, start, stop, continue. We needed to start doing a fueling station for our young people and knowing, I always say from a budget, budgetary perspective, wherever your value shows where you put your, where you invest your resources. Indeed. And we're going to invest in these young people's experience because I want when they leave here, not just to say, oh, I went to Albany State. I want them to say I'm a golden ram. So when they come back, they want to be engaged sure. alumni and they want to give up their talent, their, their time and their treasures. Put you on the spot here now. Yes. Kind of a two parter. OK. What's been the 
most challenging thing you've experienced since you've been here? And what has brought you the most joy since you've been Ooh, here? Okay, let's start with the, the bad part exactly. first. Okay. In terms of challenging, I would say most of my career has been spent working at private schools. So making the adjustment to a state-run institution, you know, at private schools, I hate to say it, it's like one big pot of money, oh, right? Sure. And you kind of just <laughs> shift things around however you want right, to. Yeah, right. The state schools, it's very specific, <laughs> very regimented, and you can't move things the way I'm used to having a little bit more flexibility. So learning how a state institution is operated, that was, was a challenge. And it still is going to continue to be a challenge yeah. because, again, I've spent 15-plus years of my life at, at private institutions. I would say the most rewarding beyond football going to the championship game because especially for me being a woman in this role, you don't find very many women that are leading successful football programs, right, or successful athletic departments with a successful football program. So to see how those young people rallied Mm -hmm. and, you know, battle even when they thought they were out. And Coach Gray, with his leadership, really pushed them to say, no, we're not out. And he did all the math and did all the things and all the scenarios. <laughs> and here we are. And he made them believe. He, I mean, I was believing as well. But, you know, there was a little bit like, oh, I don't uh, know if that's going to happen. Maybe next year. <laughs> so to see the way, particularly the Fort Valley game, where they rallied, I think it was with four minutes left maybe in the fourth quarter, and you're down 7-0, and you come back and you score. I mean, it was just, mm -hmm. you talk about I had to hold it together <laughs> at that moment because emotionally you just wanted to just sure. jump out there and run and, you know, just really hug those, those young folks. So seeing that happen is going to be amazing. And then I'll say the last thing was over the last two weeks, we've had the, uh, Alpha Kappa Alpha, who just crossed last week, Last night, we had Omega Psi Phi, and in both of those organizations, we had student athletes. Mm. So when you talk about what I like to say, academics first, athletics second, and a controlled social life third, you show that social life. And to see, I think we had 10 or 12 young women who uh, were initiated into Alpha Kappa Alpha, and I'm a Delta, so you know, I'm gonna just give a little, little bit of love there. <laughs> but then we also had two football players initiated into Omega Psi Phi. So you talk about the total student athlete experience, that was a, a highlight for me. And I sure like the way you phrase that, a controlled social life. Controlled, and absolutely, indeed. absolutely. And then the other part is my son is here too. Oh, so my wow, son is competing on, yeah, on, on one of our athletic teams. <laughs> so to be able to see him on a regular basis, and even though he lives on campus and does all of that, but it's, I always tell people I'm a mom first. Sure. And so to see him in his element and enjoying what he's doing, it's that part is extraordinarily heartwarming from a personal perspective. I only asked for one. You gave me three, a long list. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I the, hear you. the key word is controlled. Yes. And yes. you are in control here and doing a wonderful job. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me today. Thank you for having us. <laughs> Dr. Christine Kelly, the athletics director here at Albany State University, gracious enough to join us for a few minutes at halftime. Enjoy the rest of the basketball game. Thank you. We better pull this out. We, we have eight. We're only down eight. Listen, that's oh, just no. two and a half possessions. Time. We can Absolutely. get it together. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you so Enjoy. much. Uh -huh. Take care. And we will step out for another time out here. 39-31. The Tigerettes of Tuskegee leading it. More basketball just ahead after the break. Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easier than ever to get what you need and have fun out there. Get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your Academy store. Live here inside the West Arena on the campus of Albany State at the intermission. It's a 39-31 lead for the Tigerettes of Tuskegee. 
over the Lady Rams of Albany State. Take a look at some of the first half stats as we get set for second half action. Walker, anything jumping out off the page at you at this point? Absolutely. The shooting prowess of the Tuskegee Lady Tigerettes in that first half, shooting over 50%, Charles, 52.9%. But they need to, actually both teams need to uh, improve on the free throw percentages. Both teams shooting 50%. That's not good enough, Charles. Another stat that jumps out, turnover story for Tuskegee. Five turnovers in the first 20 minutes of play. You can certainly take that, Charles, as a positive statistic. Tuskegee with the 39-31 lead. Just a couple seconds before we head into second half action. Individual scoring in that first half. Any updates there? Anybody doubled figured at this point? Nobody in double figures right now, Charles. However... Kira Peterson leads all scores with nine points tonight, along with Brittany Boland on the other side for the Lady Tigerettes. Eight-point lead for Tuskegee. Both teams vying for their first conference win. One will get it here. Just 20 minutes of basketball remaining. Half-court set for Tuskegee. This is Brittany Boland with the basketball. Abdul Rahim handles now. Jasmine Manuel pops out to touch it. Now Malik has it, and over to McElroy, who shoots it right into the Tuskegee bench for the turnover. Wow, Charles, I may have given them the announcer's yeah. jinx. They <laughs> talked about how proficient they were with the turnovers. Only five in the first half. They come in out first possession and turn it over. So the Lady Rams now take it over after the turnover. This is Joanna Bell at the block trying to get it over to Saffold, and the Lady Rams return to favor, Walker. They turn it over. So it's Saffold out on the floor. Chelsea Hill getting the start in the second half for Coach Skinner. Apparently she's feeling better, Charles. Came into this one a little bit ill, along with Monique Christian, who's out of the lineup tonight. Jasmine Fairchild out there. And Malik turns with a jumper for Tuskegee, missed on the shot. Fairchild gets the rebound for the Lady Rams. Outlet pass, Bell down in the corner. Hill with a jumper, got it. So Hill continuing to score the basketball for the Lady Rams. 39-33, Tuskegee leads it. Lady Rams drop into a zone defense. Bolin pops a jumper from out front, missed on the shot. Joanna Hill handles the junior from Miami, Florida. Got some space, she'll put a jumper up. Missed on the shot, good square out at the block there by Jasmine Manuel for Tuskegee for the rebound. McElroy up the floor at the block, Malik. Drop step and a whistle. A foul out front by Kara Ferguson, Peterson that is, for the Lady Rams. So Peterson picks up her second. Tuskegee to inbound it left of their cylinder with 8.26 remaining in the third period. Abdul Rahim out front, McElroy's got some space, drills a three pointer for Tuskegee. Third three pointer, no correction, second three pointer of the game by McElroy Charles. She's got double digits in points now. Saffold's jumper is off the mark, but she drew a whistle. 8-11 remains in the third, 42-33 Tuskegee leads. But at the line, Elisa Saffold, the junior from Birmingham, Alabama, to shoot here. Saffold coming into today's ball game, 6-7 from the free throw line. 86% free throw shooter. Sprinter is good for Saffold, the first three throw. Leads the team in scoring with 14.7 points per ball game. Also leads them in minutes logged at 36 minutes per contest average. Spinner on the second one doesn't stay down for 42-34, Tuskegee leads with the basketball. Malik behind the arc, dumped it inside to Manuel. Jasmine's got some space, floater to the rack. 
Shot it too hard. Basketball to Saffold. Three on three basketball now. Elisa right side. Up top to Bell. She'll back pedal near the mid-stripe. Whistles. And we're going back the other way. An elbow pushed out of there. They call it on Peterson. Trying to set a screen, but punched that elbow out there. 7.37 left in the third period. Tuskegee with the basketball. Men's action to follow here inside the West Campus Arena. Golden Rams coming off of that overtime win over Spring Hill. And Tuskegee's men a loss to Fort Valley. They'll be looking for their first conference win. Shot clock at 12 as Tuskegee has it in a half court set. Entry pass to Malik at the block. Has to come back out front to Brittany Bolin. Now five to shoot. In the corner, Malik fires a three pointer. Spinners down for a second, but came out. And here come the Lady Rams. Saffold. Tuskegee drops into that 2 3 zone defense. Hill's got some space. Line drive jumper there by Chelsea Hill. Chelsea Hill, Charles, shaking off the six. She's got four points in the second half, six overall tonight. Yeah, she's coming alive for the Lady Rams. Sometimes, Charles, believe it or not, when you're sick, you're more tuned in to what's going on. Sure. I think we remember all a few years ago when Michael Jordan was really sick and really had one of the best performances of his professional career. And we go back to the inside. Looks like they're going to call a charge against Saffold down at the block. Elisa Saffold tried the Euro in the lane, laid it up with the left hand. Good positioning by the Tigerettes defender to draw the charge. Trinity Layton set the check in for Coach Wester and Tuskegee, but she'll do that after the timeout. 6.23 left in the third period, 42-36. Tuskegee with the lead. More SIC basketball coming your way after this timeout. As a global bank, our game plan is to help clients manage their money. We're a team of challengers, thinkers, and go-getters. Together, we bring out the best in each other. With our partner, SIAC, we're creating pathways for the next generation of talent. We're scouting bankers, advisors, techies, and yes, athletes. Kick off your career with UBS. Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easy to get what you need and have fun out there. Get free shipping at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your Academy store. Back live in the West Campus Arena at Albany State University. Joint effort between Albany State and Tuskegee to bring you video coverage of this basketball game. Ordinarily on the road, we're audio only. Uh, through this cooperative effort between the schools, able to bring you this video of this contest as well. Glad you could join us for the coverage. Charles Ward, Dwayne Walker with the play call. 42-36 as play resumes here in the third period. Elisa Saffold, Charles, trying to explain to the referee, the official, <laughs> about what had happened was on that <laughs> offensive foul that called on her. <laughs> Let me guess how that turned out. <laughs> Bowling. Out front to Abdul Rahim. Down in the corner, Malik on the move. And threw it away. This will be an over and back. Basketball is going to belong. No, they say they go to Rams, touched it. So McElroy runs it down. She's got to get it airborne. She did, but missed on the shot. Shot clock violation. Extraordinary defensive effort by the Albany State Golden Rams. Enforcing that shot with no clock, no time on the shot clock. Yeah, got away from Tuskegee in the half court set. Apparently, uh, Lady Rams touched it. But the good defensive work stands for them. They got the basketball back. 5.39 left in the third. Foul on extended short jumper there is off the mark by Bell. Air ball back over to Tuskegee. So JoJo Monroe will check back in, relieving Joanna Bell. 
Bell, who leads the team in 16 assists, took an off-balance shot right there that, uh, as you mentioned, Charles, didn't hit anything. Tigerettes in a half-court set. Now bowling across the floor to Abdur Rahim. Trying to get it at the block. She'll take a three-pointer instead. But the backside rebound run down by Brittany Bolin in the right corner. Abdur Rahim with a hop step in the paint. They leave her there. Left it short on the iron. Defense gave up on her. She had a free shot. Not able to convert it. Smallest player on the court comes up with that rebound, Charles, in Monroe. She gets a good screen, tried to leave it down in the corner, and Sappho able to run it down. Now across the floor, they go to Hill. Now down at the block, they turn it to Holmes. Holmes with the jumper in the paint. Oh, yeah. Nice patient offense there by the Lady Rams. Very nice move by Malaya Holmes. Six points tonight. 440 left here, third period. Lead to four now for Tuskegee. Bolin behind the arc. Malik in the corner for three, back of the iron. Saffold alone on the backside, collects that rebound. Get it down at the block. Holmes working on the inside to the glass, and she drew a foul. Oh, I love it. The bench loves it, too, for the Golden Rams. Milana Holmes, Charles, only averaging 14 minutes per game, but... When given the opportunity, she's maximizing her minutes in an exhibition loss against Georgia Southern. Against the Golden Eagles, Charles, she scored 13 points and had six rebounds. And that's against a Division I opponent in Georgia yep. Southern. She recognized that she had Brittany Bolin down at the block and went right to work on Bolin. 4.15 remains in the third period. Update on stats up at this point. Behind Charles, the arc, it's dipped a bit. The Tigerettes have to 43% now. And Charles, what's alarming again is that free throw statistic for Tuskegee. Only two attempts from the line, so that means that you're not working the ball inside out, number one, and you're not getting any scoring in the paint. That's what it tells me overall. Nice call. But, but where it matters most on the scoreboard, they're up 42 to 38. Yeah, Lady Rams have chipped into that lead, though. Right now, it's down to four. The last couple of minutes have favored Albany State. And you also, you got to give credit to the Lady Tigerettes for uh, after that turnover on the very first possession of the second half. Since then, zero turnover. So they're doing a nice job of taking care of the basketball. Holmes will be at the line shooting for the Lady Rams, trying to cut it to just a two-point edge. Holmes, you said coming in, Charles, was three of six from the line, 50%. But she's had a couple of opportunities tonight from the charity stripe. Okay, did it again, Walker. <laughs> she missed on that first one. The old announcer's jinx. One more comes her way. One of two from the line, got the second. Alana Roberts out on the floor now for Tuskegee. So is Aliyah Austin. Try to get it to Roberts posting, and she threw it and threw it away. Basketball to Monroe. Across the floor to Saffold. Saffold, entry pass inside the Fairchild. Nice drop step by her to the glass, shot it hard. Austin clears for Tuskegee. Over to Bolin. Fancy footwork there by Fairchild. She gathered herself quite nicely on that. Just couldn't get the basketball to fall in. McElroy out front. Over to Malik behind the arc. Entry pass and thrown away in heavy traffic. JoJo Monroe, left side Saffold. She have to run it down in the left corner. Now entry pass at the block, Holmes. Defense just never caught up. Good job there by the Lady Rams in that half court set. That whole sequence was initiated by Saffold and Fairchild, double teaming the po post, not allowing that entry pass, and it caused a turnover and a transition bucket. Austin inside has to push it back to Malik. They can play catch with it as Austin with a hard drop step, but a travel. Now, just like that, Lady Rams with a chance to claim the lead with 3.04 remaining in the third. Kyla Raven checks into the ball game, Charles, replacing Fairchild, who was just part of that turnover, 
in transition basket for the Golden Rams. 304 left in the third. Basket here, Lady Rams can take a lead. Monroe, the junior from Freeport across the timeline. Out front, Saffold pops for the basketball. Right side, Euro step, floated to the glass, missed on the bank shot. Austin clears for Tuskegee. Bolin to McElroy. Roberts pops out, works the screen. But with Brittany Bolin, jumper left side, got it. Charles, it's about time. Tuskegee had only scored three points up to that juncture. Now make it five points in this third frame. 220 left in the third. 44-41, Tuskegee ahead. Lady Rams, right side, Hill. Inside, floater. Bolin got a hand on the basketball, but I think they got some body contact that for her coming from the, at the back of that play. It will go against Bolin Charles, her second personal foul. She scored nine points in the first half. And now on the board once again, she's got 11, but Committed an untimely foul right there. Taylor Thrash back out on the floor for Coach Skinner. She'll replace Saffold in their lineup. Hill missed on the first of two. Charles, the struggle continues for both of these teams at the charity strike. Dismal shooting effort tonight from the free throw line. Yeah, we talk about it all season long. That's the difference in most contests is what you do with that free throw line. You can help yourself or hurt yourself. One of two that trip from the line by Hill. 2-10 remains in the third. Two-point lead for Tuskegee. And they have the basketball across the timeline with Brittany Bolin handling. Malik back to Bolin, pushes a three in front of the iron. Rebound to Monroe. Quick step for her. Slides all the way through the paint. Good ball fake. Good defensive recovery there by Ariel McElroy to catch up with that play and get the block out of bounds. Love the fact that JoJo Monroe recognized the situation and decided to push the pace all the way to the basket and drew a foul. So Monroe the junior to shoot. Monroe with seven points in that first half, Charles, including a make from the free throw line. Let's see if she can convert right here on two. Got the first one. Maybe working your way through that Broadcaster's jinx walk. <laughs> yeah, she got them both. Okay, so you're clear. And we are tied at 44 each with a minute 47 left in the third. Zone defense for the Lady Rams. Entry pass inside the manual who just got on the floor. Underneath the defense and she got a lay in. You talk about a perfect substitution at the right time. She's inserted into the lineup and comes away with a basket fourth. Tuskegee and a free throw coming. Manuel with just two points in that first half, as I mentioned before, averaging just 17 minutes per contest. But if you were to scale her numbers out, she's shooting very, very well from the field. 60% with two for two effort tonight. She'll improve on that. Plus from the free throw line, Charles, on the, on the year, she's shooting a very impressive 82%, although she misses that one. Basketball tapped around. Bolin had it. And going to be a foul called here. Looks like on Monroe for the Lady Rams. And the Aaron shot at the free throw line is kind of tapped around. Bolin was giving chase, and Monroe was coming back from the other end of the floor, and she commits the foul. Beautiful job by the Tigerettes. Beautiful job by the Tigerettes to convert there as Bolin will step to the free throw line to shoot two. She makes the first attempt. And she'll receive another. Second attempt on the way, and that one is good. So Tuskegee now will bounce back out to a four point lead, Charles. Well, minute 29 remains, third period. Monroe works it right side. 
Tuskegee has gone to a woman-on-woman -on -woman defense now. Thrash out front. Work it down in the corner to Raven. Raven missed on the shot. Tie up under the bottom of the cylinder. A foul called underneath there. I think that's going to be Ariel McElroy. Holmes and McElroy battling for position down low, and they call the foul on McElroy. Holmes has played some inspired basketball so far in this contest, Charles, taking advantage of her minutes. So she'll be shooting here. It's Jasmine Manuel back out on the floor. Charles, in the first half, she played eight minutes, which was second least than all the players. However, she's a contributor on the scoreboard with four points in that first half. And then so far in this second half, she's gotten five points. She can get to double dip it digits with a make right here. Missed It'll on be the 10 first. points if she converts. Excuse me, Charles. Okay. 71 seconds left first. Third period of play. One 10 points for her now, Charles. Mm -hmm. Even 10 for her after the free throw. Bowling, top of the key. Left side, McElroy. 60 seconds left, third period. Malik on the push in the corner. Back to Bowling, jumper right side, down in the cylinder, and comes out. Monroe, half court set. Up top, jumper there by Raven. Air ball, but down at the block is Thrash or a putback. She can't get it to fall. Now, finally cleared out of there by Malik. And Tuskegee has it with 34 seconds remaining, leading 48-45. Fans now yelling defense, the Golden Rams fans. Down at the block, Malik took a dribble there. Now it's loose on the floor, tie up. Arrows pointing towards the other way. It'll be Golden Rams basketball. And you referenced this throughout the season. They dumped that pass on the inside to the player and taking that dribble draws the defense rather than just grabbing it and going straight up. That's what Malik did that time. Results in the basketball going over to Albany State. Fundamental basketball, Charles, excellent point. 18.5 seconds left in the third. Back out on the floor for Coach Skinner. It's Kira Peterson. Monroe out front. There's nine seconds left in the third. Saffold down in the corner on the move. This is Raven, floater at the glass, banked it home. Nice job there by the Lady Rams to work that clock and get that final basket before the end of the third. And as we come to the end of the third, it's a 48-47 lead for the Tiger Reds of Tuskegee. More SIC basketball, final period coming your way after this timeout. Sports and Outdoors makes it easy to get what you need and have fun out there. Get free shipping at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your Academy store. Enjoying our joint coverage of SIC basketball. Tuskegee and Albany State on the west campus of Albany State. I'm schools. enjoying the coverage, Charles. I don't know about anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> With us two well, going at it back I'm, and forth. <laughs> I'm happy you are, right? <laughs> My friend Dwayne Walker. Start to call him Mr. Apparel. <laughs> Funny thing happened on the way to the arena today. <laughs> oh, here we yeah. go. I'll leave it at that. I'm not going. <laughs> Underway here. Final 
10 minutes of basketball. Charles Ward, Dwayne Walker with the play call. Tuskegee with a one-point lead. They dump it down at the block to Austin. Down in the corner, McElroy free. Fires the three, left it on the front of the iron. Lead out to Monroe, three on one now. JoJo, left side to the glass. Missed on the shot, got the rebound at the block somehow. JoJo, no go. She got swatted in the eye, and she'll smartly bring the ball out to reset. Right corner this time to the rack. Sprinter falls good for JoJo. Yes, ma'am. JoJo Monroe, Charles. Double digits now. She's got 11. And Tuskegee with the basketball and finds themselves trailing. Layton, left side, McElroy. Crip shot there, missed on the shot, left corner. 9.08 left in the contest. Lady Rams with the lead, 49-48. Charles, that's their first lead in quite some time. In the first half, there were five lead changes and the score was tied just twice. Just thinking that very same thing that had been a while before they had the lead. Saffold from out front. Missed, oh, missed on the shot, rebound to Bolin. Up the floor now, Layton runs the floor. Right side and Trinity got the lay in for the Tigerettes. Very Good nice. soft lead pass there walked by no, Bolin. No question connecting with Trinity Layton on the go route. She caught the foot, the, the, caught the <laughs> basketball. That's all right, scored. you got to finish that one, yeah. <laughs> he started it, good call. 50-49 <laughs> after the delay in by Bolin. That's Kiki with the lead. Now Raven, jumper, left side, missed on the shot. Layton clears the rebound for the Tigerettes. She is going to command a lot of playing time for Coach Wester as this season progresses. Malik underneath oh, the defense. Yes. The spinner is good at the block. What I liked about that move by Michaela Malik, she immediately went to her move, went to the baseline, did not hesitate, and scored. Underneath for the two. JoJo, left side. This is Chelsea. Hill over to Raven. Raven turns into the defense. And looks like it's going to be a travel violation. And indeed it will. Yep, yeah. a nabber for the travel. And Fairchild is going to enter the contest and relieve uh, Raven. So Raven takes the seat after the turnover. 7.46 remains in the contest. Tuskegee with a 52-49 lead. Bolin out front, right side, McElroy. Malik at the free throw line. Dumps it down low at the block to Austin. Aaliyah can't handle it, and she'll be guilty of the foul. Trying to catch up with that play after the turnover. Kayla Malik fed the basketball inside, and it was just simply, simply mishandled. The end result on that should have been a bucket, but Trinity could not hang on to the basketball there. Left side now, back on the floor is Peterson. Whistles as she tried to dump it down inside. And check that, Aaliyah Austin was a recipient down there. Good call. And Austin Charles has to be careful, although she just entered the ball game, she threw a, a phantom elbow, if you will. So I think she's a little frustrated from mishandling that basketball. And Charles, when you make a mistake on the court, it's very important that you act like a defensive back and just pretend like it never happened and move on to the next play. You can't compound the mistake. Yeah, absolutely right. At the free throw line, it's Peterson. She got the first. And you know, I teach uh, sports broadcasting up at Morehouse College, and I have to commend you. But one of the things I tell them that, you know, when you're doing a game and you make a mistake, you can go back and correct it. You did a perfect job with Austin down at the block. When you recognize that it wasn't her, it was her that did it instead of Layton. Right in, make the call, clear it up, keep going. Keep it moving. You get an A. Well, A minus, because I got it wrong the first time around, Charles. That, that's it's, not an A. It's, a it's an A minus. <laughs> but it could have been a B if I didn't go back and correct sure. that thing, right? Absolutely. Got to do it. Half court set now for the Tigerettes. 7.05 left. Bowling behind the arc, 13 to shoot, running jumper right side, canned it there for the Tigerettes. Oh, that was nifty, Charles, recognizing she had a smaller player on her and simply elevated over Monroe to convert that two-point bucket. Nicely done, 54-51 after that basket. Peterson guns a three, answers for the Lady Rams. 
Peterson is heating up now, Charles. She's got 13 points in this contest now. Abdul Rahim up to bowling. McElroy, 6.25 left. Abdul Rahim at the block. What a pass inside from McElroy to Abdul Rahim. McElroy with the assist. Excellent cross court pass, Charles. 20 feet in the air on the connection. 6.12 left in the contest. Three point lead for Tuskegee. Abdul Rahim with that basket last time down the floor. Bucket and the harm, Charles. Call a foul on this half court set on McElroy for Tuskegee now. And then at the line, JoJo Monroe. It kind of rhymes, doesn't it, Charles? Kind of flows <laughs> off, the, off the lips. Yeah, sure does. And that shot fell right on time for her as well. Tie Three the basketball game twice. at 56. Three-point play, Charles. She had seven points in the first half. Now seven points in the second half. She's got 14 points. And keep in mind, Charles, JoJo Monroe came in averaging 1.8 points per game. That's it. Yeah. Bowling for three. Oh, yeah. Left her alone. Bowling made him pay. Triple out front makes it 59-56 with that 540 remaining. 17 points in the ledger for her tonight, Charles. 17. You know what's at stake here. First conference win for one of these teams. Saffold pops out. Lost it momentarily, but regains. Seven to shoot now for the Lady Rams. Saffold steps back. Jasmine jumped out on the defense. At the block, left hand, the job on the inside. Good job in there by Fairchild. Fairchild rotated away from the defense and laid it up with the left hand, surprised everyone. Oh yeah, great move by her. Abdul Rahim out front. They dump it up top to Leighton. Trinity foul on extended in the cylinder and popped out of there. Nothing but white jerseys there on the corral. Lady Rams come away with the basketball, trailing by a point. We're at 459, or 447 remaining in this basketball game. Monroe lost her dribble out front. On the turn is Fairchild. She lost it. Abdul Rahim comes away with it for Tuskegee. She'll run the floor right side to the glass and a whistle. Wow. How about the effort by Samaya Abdur Rahim? Saf foul commits the foul. If you're going to follow charge, if you're going to foul her, Charles, you have to foul her. She did not. Abdur Rahim finished with the lay-in. She'll be at the line after this timeout. 4:35 remains. Tuskegee with a 61-58 lead. More basketball after this timeout. Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easy to get what you need and have fun out there. Get free shipping at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your Academy store. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. Back live inside the West Campus Arena at Albany State University. And Charles, teaching lesson during that timeout, when Yasmin Fairchild she turned that basketball over on this side of the floor, on their offensive side of the floor. And instead of getting back on defense, Charles, she sat there and watched for about two seconds before reacting, before heading back up the court. And what transpired down here, Abdur Rahim took it to the basket, and one of their clutch players, Elisa Saffold, ends up committing the foul. And now Abdur Rahim can cap off a three-point play. But Coach Skinner wasted no time in a teaching moment telling her, look, you can't wait, you can't uh, give up on the play. And basketball is just the kind of sport that's like that. One thing leads to another, one thing builds off of another, one mistake leads to something you don't want on the other end of the floor. 
Half court set down at the block. Holmes with a whistle. Travel violation by the Lady Rams. Good call, Charles. He took an extra step. And Charles, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that Robert Skinner, has, he's got, no pun intended, a lot of skin in the game. Oh, no doubt. He's been around 32 <laughs> years here at Albany State, 43 overall in his coaching profession. But the thing is, the guy doesn't look a day over 40. I know. No, you're absolutely right. <laughs> Had a chance to call a ball game last year as the Tigerettes go underneath the manual and she does the manual labor with the lay in right side. What a pass by McElroy to tether that basketball down inside to Manuel who converts her sixth point of the night. Half court set now. Whistles in the corner. Monroe penetrating. McElroy trying to catch up with that and commits the foul. We're talking about Coach Skinner and his longevity here at Albany State. Last season, ranking up his 600 career win at Albany State. And he's kind of joking with him, talking to him about it. And I said, Coach, you're 600 plus wins. How do you feel about that? You must feel really good about that. I said, Charles, man, I've been here 30 something years. <laughs> you would think <laughs> I should have 600 wins. <laughs> Abdul Rahim. May have tweaked her ankle, Charles getting some assistance from her, from her teammates and getting up, but she's going to call for a sub. She's going to check out of the game. Now, Coach Wester deciding who to put in, and it's going to be Trinity Layton. How about that, Charles? We're down the stretch. Trinity Layton, who doesn't necessarily play a whole lot, averaging just eight and a half minutes per contest, getting the call late in a very important contest. Yeah, she's earned it. Had a good, has a good ba basketball game going for the Tigerettes. Down at the block, denies Holmes there. Basketball knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with the Lady Rams. And Charles, not only did she wall up on that, she knocked that ball away. I would credit that as a block for the young lady. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. Left of the base, of the cylinder. 3.44 remains. 63.58. Monroe, right of the cylinder for the Lady Rams. Entry pass. Fairchild has to run it down, got it back to Monroe for a reset. Now Saffold out front for the Lady Rams. Four to shoot, and whistles down low. And Jasmine Manuel may have bailed the Lady Rams out there. Now might send Jasmine Fairchild to the line to shoot. You know, she did Manuel a little too busy with her hands on that defensive sequence right there, but a smart foul. Well, maybe not because it sends, sure. <laughs> because it sends Fairchild to the line. I didn't think they had reached the bonus already, Charles, but apparently they have. Yeah, they've been there for a minute. With 3.36 now, what you talked about before, Walker, really is going to manifest itself. What happens from the free throw line? And she misses. Charles yeah. Fairchild came in with only two made free throws all season. Lady Ram stepping up full court pressure now. Malik had it taken away. Good defensive work by the Lady Rams. Up the floor to Saffold. At the block, Saffold lead behind for Holmes, left side, she can't convert. And Manuel clears for Tuskegee with 3.15 left. Let's see if Tuskegee will go into a half court set and try to utilize the clock. Layton behind the arc for three, missed on the shot. Basketball tipped out to Peterson, up before Saffold, left side all the way through, right side with the lay-in. Beautiful move by Saffold. Feeling the pressure and laying the basket in. Protecting First two of the second half for her, Charles, excuse me. McElroy at the block, she missed, but Manuel there with a put back left side. Charles, Manuel is perfect from the field tonight in scoring eight points. 235, a Saffo for three. Missed on the shot. And there's Manuel backside hustling, got the rebound for Tuskegee. Four-point lead for the Tigerettes. They come across the timeline. Brittany Bolin handling the basketball. The Tuskegee offense on that weave out front, trying to burn some time. Now 10 to shoot. Bolin got some space. They left her alone. Missed on the jumper, though. Rebound to Peterson. Here come the Lady Rams. Coach Skinner going to take a timeout with 2.03 remaining in the basketball game as troops trailing 65-61. Take a timeout here. More SIAC basketball just ahead.
And Charles, as we return to action, taking a look at the Tigerettes bench, a couple of things I noticed before that sequence, Jazz and Emmanuel begging to come out of the game a little bit winded while Samaya Abdur-Rahim trying to get back into the game. She left a few moments ago tweaking her ankle, but she's itching at the bit to get back in the game. And as I look, she will re-enter the contest. And Jazz Emanuel will step out. But in these situations, Charles, let me just say this is a point of emphasis. The Lady Tigerettes, they need Jazz Emanuel. Look at what she's done over the course of the last couple minutes. Scoring buckets, making rebounds, challenging on the defensive end. So uh, they need her at the end of these games. So hope she can get a blow and come back into the contest. All right, we're under two minutes remaining in it. Peterson pushes a three. Spinner down in the cylinder for a moment and came out. All the Golden Ram fans in unison went, oh. Yeah, <laughs> wanted that one badly. 65-61, Tuskegee still with the lead. Brittany Bolin with the basketball on their half of the court. If you're That's the Lady Tigerettes, you got to work that shot clock down. Abdul Rahim lead behind for Austin in the paint. Aliyah spends it good for Tuskegee. Beautiful one-two by Abdur Rahim recognizing that play. That's a way to come off the bench. Gets an assist there. JoJo Monroe works it across the paint. Lost the dribble now. Trying to get it down at the block. Got to get it to someone. She finally got it over to Raven. Raven entry pass inside to Holmes. Left side to the rack. Mm. Beautifully done. Couldn't have done anything else on that shot. It just didn't stay for her. Like the way Holmes established position on the inside. She wanted the basketball just a little too strong. Too strong. I like that. <laughs> Under a minute left. Abdul Rahim back pedals. 14 to shoot. Now Abdul Rahim on the move. Nine to shoot. Across the floor. Bolin's free. Fires a jumper. It came out. Still Charles a two possession ball game. They can get a two for one right here if they hurry. Monroe pushing across the timeline and Coach Skinner instead of hurrying so they'll take a time out here. 31 seconds left in the basketball game and I can hear your thought on that walk is that they, they really would push it coming across the timeline. Chance to try to get a quick entry pass and a lay in and see if he makes something happen defensively. So No question but there's tough position right now for the Golden Rams the situation they're in as we take a look at the stats through this score with 31 seconds to play. There you see the shooting percentages from the free throw line, 61 and 50 respectively. And then, uh, but, but the point I want to make here, Charles, in this particular instance, unfortunately for the Golden Rams, they're trailing by six. They've only committed one team foul this quarter, so it's going to be difficult for them to foul to put the Lady Tigerettes in the bonus. So they're going to have to commit fouls here quite often after getting this shot up. Indeed, Tuskegee, three of six from the free throw line. We'll have to see if their free throw shooting holds up, assuming that the Lady Rams will foul them and put them at the line. Half court set now for the Lady Rams. Meanwhile, Attack they got to the, take care of the yeah. offensive business first. Attack the basket. Kickball will have a reset. It'll go back to 20 seconds. 26.6. All right, so they reset the shot clock to 20 seconds. And now Albany State will inbound the basketball. But Charles, you have to be thinking a couple plays ahead as I see off to the distance, Jasmine Manuel checking back into the game with 26.6 seconds to play. Yeah, need, gotta be in there for this stretch run. Try to get a defensive rebound. All right, let's go to work right here. Let's go to work, go to work. Holmes, left side, got the lay in. They were not gonna foul at that trip. Got a foul, you got a foul, you got a foul. You got it. The fans are yelling foul. You're just letting too much time drift off the clock here. Abdul Rahim down the manual, back out front. Yeah, they've gone past that line of being able to get that foul done. Yeah, Wasted but, way too much time. But Charles, again, you're under 30 seconds to play, so they've got the shot clock for the duration of the possession. You have to immediately foul. Like you have to press and foul. Like right here in this situation, you need to foul right now on the inbound. As soon as it comes in, tell the official, I'm getting ready to foul. 9.2 remains. Abdul Rahim pops out for the basketball. Monroe trying to get to her. Got a hand on her and commits the foul. 7.5 seconds left. And Charles, I might also mention, it's a pleasure here doing this joint venture between Tuskegee and Albany State. Indeed. Unique. 
set of circumstances allows us to come off. 4.1 seconds remaining. And Brittany Boland fouled out front. And they'll be side out after that foul. And Charles has Melania, uh, Melena Holmes, and she made a case for herself to get more playing time this season moving forward. Sure, a couple of players have tonight. She and JoJo Monroe for sure for Coach Skinner. And Trinity Layton for Coach Wester and Tuskegee. All right, Charles, so let's fast forward ahead now with 3.5 seconds left. Albany State, they've committed four fouls in the last 26 seconds. But unfortunately, might be a little too little too late here. Yeah, with only 3.5 remaining, one free throw really will do it. And McElroy got the first one. McElroy with 11 points overall tonight. For the second, left it on the front of the iron. And Coach Skinner going to take a timeout with three seconds left. Trailing by five. Thinking three-pointer, perhaps a foul on the three-pointer, probably the best he can hope for with three well, seconds left. Well, Charles, I don't recall ever seeing any five-point plays. Four points, yes. Five points, no. So, <laughs> on, so on this sequence here, Charles, what do you do? Oh, you try I, to get the ball. I'm going to tell you what you try to do. You're going to try to get the shot for a quick shot me. for three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a quick shot for three. Sure. And hope for a foul. Oh, but you, you know what? A foul right after that. I did see a five-point play at Fort Valley. Really? Indeed. It was a combination of three-point shot, a foul on the three-point shot, and a tech came right after that. Nice. There's Saffold. And that ends it here at the West Campus Arena. 68-53. Tuskegee getting their first win, conference win of the season over the Lady Rams of Albany State. Tuskegee leading almost all the way in this basketball game. And they will go to three and two overall and one and one in SIAC play. And the Lady Rams still in search of their first conference win at 0 and 6 and 0 and 2 in SIAC play. Take a look at some of the final numbers from this basketball game. Four of eight from the free throw line from Tuskegee. 14 of 23 shooting from the line for the Lady Rams of Albany State. Albany Tuskegee with a good first half of shooting from the floor. Finished the game at 46.9% shooting from the floor. 30 made field goals on 64 attempts. 22 of 59 for the Lady Rams at 37%. Behind the arc, four for made three-pointers for Tuskegee. Five for the Lady Rams. Defense rebounds overall pretty even in this basketball game. Assist 13 to 7. Ratio lead for Tuskegee. Turnovers, Tuskegee with 11. Lady Rams with 14. And this category probably really sums the game up more than any of the others. Fast point breaks. Tuskegee with 11 in the basketball game. And Lady Rams not able to get a fast point break in the contest. So the Tigerettes of Tuskegee win it. They go to 2-3-2 and three and two overall and 1-1 one and one in SIAC play. Lady Rams 0-7 and 0-2 and and in SIAC play. 68 63, Tigerettes win. Take a break here. Turn our attention to men's basketball. Tigers of Tuskegee and the Golden Rams of Albany State. That's just ahead on SIC basketball. Stay with us.